the uh, Jesus would, you know, when we see that when the Spirit of the Lord came on him, you know, the, it was in him. It was in him. And he learned of the Father. He learned. He said, you know, even at 12 years old, I must be about my Father's business. So he knew who he was. And but how many knows the Spirit of the Lord didn't come upon him until he was 30? And he carried out his assignment in three and a half years. You know? And so there's a difference between the Spirit upon us and the Spirit within. It's a different experience. It's a different work. The spirit within us, as all of us sitting here today, if you're born again, you're born of Christ. You're born of Christ. The Bible says when he died, he became the firstborn among what? Many brethren. That's me and you. Amen? And that's the book of Colossians right there. And, and, and man, I'll tell you what, that's just, that, in that itself, that's just, that's days, weeks of study. If you're willing to press into that. And it'll reveal a lot to you about who you are. And the spirit within is that new birth. That's, that's that spirit. The Bible speaks of it as wells of living water. But then we get over into rivers of living water. And then those are attributes that we act out on. Those are things that when we hear God say, hey, you see that man right over there? Don't you go pray for him. You know, I want, I want my life to bear witness through you. And, and there's an intrigue in this church for the supernatural. And God, you know, it, what, what really looks at what God really looks like at is availability. Yes. Yeah. Amen. I mean, if you check out church history and you look at the people that God used, your mind would go, why would he use them? In many cases. You know, they weren't, they weren't the best looking. They weren't, you know, this. I mean, what man might look at. But, you know, the Lord said to me one time, he just put it deep in my heart, so deep in my heart, just gently, but he put it in my spirit, and he kind of said these words. And he was talking about when he anointed David to be, you know. He said, Gary, well, I saw in David what he was to become. But he said, you know, the prophet said, hey, these are my boys. Even his own father pushed, the, you know, the older brothers toward, hey, you know, this is. And he said, is there anybody else? You know, in other words, you've, you've exhausted what man could see. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And a lot of times your own heart will preserve you, even though your head's wrong. If you have a heart toward God. And pastor just said it like this. He said, when you're willing to be in his presence, I love, I love, man. I mean, I was... Uh, uh, where I was staying, I, I got back with Pastor. He told me to eat. It was, I was a good boy today to salad. Lee had been proud of me. Because she asked me all the time, what are you eating? She's on me more than ever about that. And uh, she'll say to me, she said, listen, I've got you trained after 30, going on 32 years. It's done. It's set. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh, bad boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 until it gets, you know. But no, seriously, she'll go, and I, 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 you know, I want you around for a while. And she said, I believe in healing as much as the next person, but, you know, you can't be dumb. So, you know, we, we talk like that, and, and, but, you know, in the natural realm, we contend for life. We contend for what we're to be. What about spiritual things? And, and it comes down to your, your spiritual life is just as real as your natural life. And so, therefore, it must be real to you. I mean, I guarantee you, when you wake up in the morning, you're, you're going to have your cup of coffee, you're going to have your hot tea, whatever you get off on, I mean, whatever you do, you know, you get these energy drinks, you know, and, uh, you know, but whatever you are, you, I mean, you, you'll exercise that, you'll do it. And, then, you know, at, at, you know, 6.45 or 7, whatever you are, you head out that door and you're going to work. And, I mean, so you're about your day. What about spiritual things? They must become reality to us. Yeah. And, and so it, it's more than just tradition. It's more than just showing up. Right. It takes fresh experience. It takes daily. Yeah. You know, and, 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 you know, a lot of times as believers, we hear that. But we get caught up. And, and, the, and Jesus said it like this. He said, there's one thing that can affect the work of my Father in you. 
It's what? Your traditions. And so a lot of times, as I got over in some things this morning, that keeps us out of that place that God really wants to work in us. You know, it depends on what's going on in us. And he said to Peter, like, let's pull up John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verse 6. And we saw that Peter got over into some things. He was there, man. I mean, listen, I don't care what you say. He's the guy that walked on the water. Nobody else has ever done it that I know of. Or that I, you know, I'm not saying somebody hasn't. But, I mean, as far as scripturally, he's the only one that did. And there's a lot of critical voices I've heard preaching over the years. Yep, he, you know, he, the storm got him. He looked at the things around him. Yeah. You know, you'd hear it. But I'm thinking, yeah, but you never walked on any water. That's right. Until you've done what he did, don't, 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 don't put the guy down. Am I right or am I wrong? But, you know, he had the intrigue of spiritual things. He, okay, hey, if, if it, that's you, let me come toward you. He was hungry for it. Now, did he always hit it right? No. But he, you know, but he became a great apostle. He became a great man of God. Where even his shadows, it went by. Yes. I mean, they thought, man, Lord, if I can get around that guy. Yes, sir. I mean, if you, if you study the one with the issue of the blood, the Bible says, well, she just, she took hold of that prayer shawl. Right. And she poured on them little things, what you call, I can't pronounce that, but. However, Anyway, don't, I'm looking at the pastor. He's well studied, you know. And he pulled on that thing. And she said, if I can just get to those things. To lay or something like that. And, she, and when he got, because he was a rabbi. Yes, sir. And she said, if I can just get a hold of that. Yes. And from that day forward, if you look, her acting out in innocence as a child of like faith set an inertia that it says after that, Many sought to touch him. Right. Something was released through her obedience. Wow, you're made whole. Word got around. Yeah. And there was an intrigue about who he was. And it drew it, it drew it out of him. And so, as you and I are believers, there must be an intrigue in us. There's a book, uh, I, do, I actually got the audio series called 30 AD, and I'm trying to remember the author's name right now. Anyway, it's a fictional petition of Jesus in the land, and it's people around him that were uh, Herod, different ones around him, people, and how they saw him. 30 AD, tremendous, tremendous read. But I mean, it, it, it took away the traditional view of Jesus. And how he would be out with the people. And it says the way that he taught mesmerized. Yeah. Yeah. It caught people up, the words, uh, because they were life. Yes. They were spirit and they were life. That's right. and, it, and it says, and pull up, did I tell you how to pull up uh, uh, John? Uh, th yeah. And when he, got into, when he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, are you to wash my feet? Now, we know Jesus took a towel and took it upon himself, right? Mm -hmm. to, be, to, to wash their feet. Because he was stressing something. And the Bible says he took that servant's towel and he cinched it around him. He tied it around him. And I mean, they're looking like, what is he doing? You're the rabbi. You're not, you're not supposed to do something like this. He went against tradition. Yeah. Come on. Are you listening? Yeah. But see, it was in him. Yeah. And I heard a guy say it one time, why could Jesus sleep in a storm? Boy, this rebel, you know. Well, he's Jesus. No, why could he sleep in a storm? If he's really the son of God, yeah, but if he's the son of man, how could he sleep in a storm? Because there was no storm in him. Amen. What goes on on the inside of us is very important. And sometimes you're not going to hit on all cylinders. Sorry to say. If you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. But you ain't out of the picture. Now, listen, look at this. When he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, are you to wash my feet? In other words, I mean, he wasn't getting it at that moment. Right. right or wrong? How many of you ever felt like you didn't get it? I mean, I'm, I'm talking to the choir tonight. I mean, I'll just do this right here. You know, I'd put all fours if it worked. You know, but seriously, there's just sometimes, I, I, you know, and I just like, just stay with me. Yes. Keep the intrigue. 
Because spiritual things are revealed. They're sought after. They're like, what did, what's the one parable? They're like treasure in a field. You'll buy the whole field if you realize what's there. You know, you'll just realize, hey, it's there, and I'll, but now I've got to go find it. If you'll realize what's in him, you, it, it will create pursuit in you. When I got to the hotel and pastor, I mean, I went, and of course, you know, I thought, man, I've got to get a nap because Caleb had a uh, high school graduation party and I went over there and I known him since birth. And I was, you know, wanting to, you know, and say hi and be a part. And these guys, y'all are family. We've been, I've been doing this for many years. And, and I was over there, you know, whatever. And I thought, man, I better lay down and take me a nap. But I, I got on Hillsong Channel and I was listening to their worship. They were doing that cornerstone. And I wasn't there two minutes. And I thought, man, I need to see what's going on in Fox because I want to see what, you know, if, if the Brits have found who, who did this, you know. And my natural mind, you know what I mean? But boy, I'm telling you, it wouldn't. I thought, but boy, that presence was so into that thing. And I thought, oh, I'll get it later. You know how you do. But there was intrigue because they were singing about the cornerstone. Who he is. And it just, and I mean, yeah. And I don't know, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. But just a hoot, they just worshiped. And there's a peace there. Yeah. And that intrigue of who he is. I thought, and I, I thought, you know what? You know, I always look and see, and this is better than Fox. You might as well talk to him like you think. Yes, sir. But who he is. Of course, I woke up, you know, 40 minutes later. And it's like, but see that peace. And you're going to have to become intrigued with who he is. You're going to have to know some of his attributes. Jesus knew his father. He knew who he was. His job is to get you become, to become for you to walk in some things. Yeah. And he, Next verse. You've got to get this. And Jesus answered, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but, you, but it what will be clear enough to you later. Wow. And we know that word when I, we talked about that you don't understand or know, as it says in the King James, that uh, it's the Greek word E-I-D-O. It means a present perfect tense. And what it basically means is information out of the past that's being utilized in the present. And what that means is this. We went over to John, remember John 6, 6, it talked about he knew what he was about to do when he fed the 5,000? That was that same word, E-I-D-O. He knew for what he was about to do. He knew inside, hey, God, the Father got the download to him, so this is what I'm fixing to do with you. You're fixing to feed this multitude through this little bit right here. Why do you think he had faith to act on it? Because he was the son of God or because he got the download from the Father because that was the will of heaven into earth. Yeah. You understand that? Well, see, when you begin to see stuff like that and you get a real picture, yeah. and see, you'll act out. Let me give you an example. And I might have told this before, but so many different times I've had the Spirit of God utilize giftings. Here a while back, I was at a car wash. And I was, you know, what do you do? Clean your car, right? And so I was vacuuming where we went through the wash. Some people vacuum, then wash. I wash, then vacuum, just have it. I feel kind of awkward if I do it the other way. Nothing spiritual going on, right? Well, I got Bill Winston on. Y'all know who he is, right? The pastor from Chicago. Don't know anything about it, but I love his teaching on Marketplace and stuff. So I just got him going. He's talking about the blessing. And I'm listening to him, whatever, and he's ripping it and roaring it, baby. He said, y'all done pulled me off this platform. I'll never forget. Well, I'm sitting there vacuuming. And I thought, man, you know, my trunk's dirty a little bit. I, don't know, I got some grass in it. Some of it. Probably my wife's fault with all the hay and stuff. She, you know, and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking that. And all of a sudden, this lady's right there, and she comes around. And when she came around there, the presence of God came on me. And he said, I need you to tell her. See, it blew just, it's just like a, 
and it comes. I said, ma'am, she kind of looks at me. I said, you know what? You know God. Luckily, she goes, and she's sitting there. She had the most beautiful green eyes, beautiful green eyes. And she looks right at me, and she said, yes, I do. And I said, ma'am, but you are praying and believing God for a child or something or some family member. I remember something. And when I said those words, she, at that time she had sunglasses on because it was sun, it was bright. And she pulled off those sunglasses. That's why I saw her eyes. I mean, I was like right here. And I was looking down at her, and she had the most beautiful green eyes. And it wasn't 10 seconds, Tim, 10 seconds when I said those words. Pull up John 6, 63. Real quick, then we'll go back to this. John 6, 63. Now notice this. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Now notice these words. The words that what? The rhema. The, the, the words that I what speak to you are what? No, the logo, excuse me. Are what? Spirit. And they are life. That moment, my words became spirit. Now notice that. Those, the words that I speak to you are what? Is it big S or little s? What does that mean? It means your human spirit, your heart. They are spirit. They speak to you are spirit. In other words, they're to you. They're not to, about, they're not to the Holy Spirit. To, they're to your spirit. And they're to your life. And they are what? And they are Zoe. The life of God. Your words becomes your words can become spirit. When that blows across. In other words, when you act out of what is in you. And when that instantly, instantly she tears filled her face. And she looked at me right in the face. And looked me right in the face and said, yeah. And, I, and, and whatever, I don't remember detail now. But I remember it, it, it left her. And she said, thank you. Thank you. And that has happened so many times out there. And I mean, most 99.9, I don't know them naturally. And may never see, probably never will see them until eternity if they're there. But I remember that. And man, that spoke to me. Those words become spirit and they become life. They get, they got, I was at a, uh, went by a, a church and uh, anyway, the, a certain person in that church, she's a staff member, beautiful young girl, beautiful. Uh, and, uh, but she's still, you know, she's still standing for a partner. And it was like God said to me when I, uh, he said, I want you to tell her. That her life is about me, and I will bring, you know, in other words, in me will bring that person because of what he has to be with her, and she has to be, you know, it's about me. It's about kingdom in her life. Amen. But at that time, she needed that. Those words became spirit, and they became Amen. life. Your words can become spirit. Amen. You have authority to change any atmosphere you're sent into. Yes. Pull up John chapter 10. I'm going to show you all something. <clears throat> let's go to uh, let's go to about verse 10 I think it is hang on here it's not that, hang on let me show you this everybody just bear with me a second but I want to get this across to you man this is strong He talks about where he delegates to them. He said, go heal the sick. Go. No, Matthew, excuse me, Matthew chapter 10. Go to there. Sorry about that. I want to show you all this. Make sure this is it. 
Yeah, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Excuse me, sorry about that. I've had John 10 on my mind too. Uh, but I'm going to show you this. And you need to see this. Because, see, this is about you acting out there. Yeah. I was at a, a car, I mean, a truck stop one time, and God said to me, I want you to feed that young man. Well, I, I didn't like the way he looked. That totally you, you, all you want. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? Some redneck's going to come because of the attitude he had and stuff just, that he was taking at that moment in front of that truck stop. Somebody's going to come and knock you through that glass window. And I'm going to applaud them when they do. I thought that. Now, don't look at me so holy. <laughs> and so you go... And, and, but when I got in, got in there, and I was grabbing some water out of the thing, because I thought, she is going to be on my head about how much water I drink. And I thought, you know what? So I, got, I get that big old huge, as big as I can get. And I thought, because I thought about a Snickers. That was what I was thinking. <laughs> that, now, that's God. And I always tell her, well, honey, it has peanuts in it. Anyway, yeah. so, hey, Amen. Amen. So I grabbed that, and I thought, well, she'll be on me like a chicken on a bug. So I grabbed, I grabbed, grabbed a banana because I know her. I just know her. You know, there's nothing spiritual going on. But I grabbed that bottle of water. Of course, you know, it's like 50 ounces, and I think, man, I'm going to have to chug this thing the next couple hours. <laughs> and I'm thinking this in my mind, and I think, she will ask me. And I'm thinking, you know, you got to know her. You just got to know her. And I'm Because th- she'll ask me, what you eating? And I thought, well, so I grabbed a banana. So I take it up to the counter, and but when I grab that wall, the Lord said, I want you to go buy that young man a meal. He's ready to be born again. Hallelujah. But I ignored him because of the, of the prejudice that I took in my heart before I ever walked in there. Because he gave me this hard, cold stare, whatever, and I'm thinking, who made your day, boy? You know? And I thought to me, you know, and y'all don't think this way, but, you know, you know I'm working on my redemptive part. And I thought, you know, and he just kept, you know, and of course, he'd, he'd stare at everybody, just not me. And I'm thinking, you know, what's your deal? You inbred or something? I mean, you know, you just off? <laughs> and I'm thinking that. Now, none of y'all think that way, but I just. Oh, never, never. And so I walked past, but I'm thinking in there. And, and, but now listen to this, listen to this. It's very important what you got going on, on the inside. And I reached for that bottle of water, and I heard the voice of God say to me, he said, I want you to go buy him a meal. He's ready to be born again. And I ignored it. And I didn't go, I'm not going to do that, but it just, because of my stance on that, it didn't go through. Now, I heard it, but it's like, meh. So I get up there. I set it on the counter, pump, uh, water and banana, right? I'm thinking, I'm right. Lee's going to ask me if I'm drinking the water. Boom, I'm paying for it, and I heard it again. And I said, there ain't no way. I said it out loud. Because he said to me, I want you to go buy that young man a meal. He's ready to be born again. But I said, and I said this out loud. And the girl's right there behind the, uh, the counter. And she says, she said, sir, did you say something? I said, babe, sometimes, let me tell you something. Sometimes did you ever talk to yourself? She goes, yeah. And I said, the real issue comes when you answer yourself. So she laughs and thinks it's funny. So I hand her the card, right? Nothing, whatever. And I mean, I get, what do you call that? The, uh, uh, the receipt thing, I get that. And I'm thinking, okay, I got to drop it in the file that I got beside my seat. You know, and I'm playing this out, and all of a sudden, I, it, it, it interrupts again. I want you to buy him a meal. He's ready to be born again. So I walk her and walk past him, get in, open, look, just looked at him. He just staring at me. I just, just want, you know, I get, and I, I get in and I insert my key. I got it halfway inserted, and all of a sudden, the third person is in that seat. There ain't nobody naturally in that seat. And I hear a, a I said to you, and it stopped me. I pulled the key, got out, locked the door. I looked at him, and I said, are you hungry? And he, he just shook his head. I mean, I said, let's go get something to eat. He ended up getting born again. 
I mean, it just, I mean, all he talked about was this rehab. He talked about his life on the street, black heroin. I'm thinking, he's, I, I didn't understand 60, 70% of what he said, of the way he did things, whatever, because I've never been around drugs or not, you know. But he talked about somebody talking in, in the rehab. He, he went to this real super duper rehab, and somebody talked to him his entire time in there about being born again. He prayed the sinner's prayer right there at that table. And his whole complexion changed as we did. Amen. Now let me say this to you. Those words became spirit when I acted. Amen. You've got to act Amen. when you hear. Amen. Did we pull up Matthew 10? Yeah. And when he had called his uh, 12 disciples to him, he gave them power to over what? To overcome over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now notice he didn't say to them when he called them, you go and pray. He said to them, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. He just gave, now that's delegated authority. That's kingdom authority. He didn't say for you, I want you to go pray for him. He said, I want you to go heal. Act. And when, how would I say, most of the time, 99% of the time, now when, sometimes when I see somebody that's, you know, whatever, you know, but most of the time it's just I'll, that thing will blow in me. Yeah. Time after time, waitresses and waiters. I mean, I was sitting in a desk in Florida, 1130 at night, because we'd had a Holy Ghost meeting that night in the service, and it just ran late, and there was nobody there, and the pastor said, Brother Gary, I'm so sorry. We're going to have to take you to like a, it's, you know, it's going to be like a truck stop. But I was hungry, and he was hungry, and he said, but I mean, we got in there, and as I was walking in, the Lord said, he said, this pastor, I've placed a certain anointing upon him, but he's not, he's not quite understanding what I need him to do. And I just knew that something was going to go down in that restaurant, and I just had to have a heart that was ready, because I'd already shut it down, if you understand, because I was tired. Physically, I was tired. And I thought, and because I'd ministered Sunday morning, and then Sunday night, and the anointing had been there, and you're, you're physically, you'll get drained a little bit. And I'm thinking, I'm going to have me some biscuits and gravy. Lee, Lee won't know about that. You know what I mean? That's it. She's, she's done gone, baby. She's down for the count. And I'm thinking, I'm going to get me a big old sloppy mess of biscuits and gravy. This place ought to have some nasty grease. You know what I mean? Just greasy. Some bacon grease. You know what I mean? Just all that good stuff. So I'm sitting there, and I'm walking in with him, and I get ready to sit down, and all of a sudden, an anointing came on me. And I'm thinking, man, that was God. I know I heard God now, biscuits and gravy. <laughs> but, you know, really what was so funny was the presence of God came on. Yep. And I looked at her, and I said, what's your life about? Oh, oh, it opened a floodgate, a floodgate. And she looked right at me. She would occasionally look at the pastor and his wife. They're an older couple, and their children were grown. He's a retired colonel out of the Air Force, flew planes. And he looked, you know, and she just stared. And she just lit up and started talking about her husband's in, in, in overseas, I think Saudi Arabia, wherever. And he, he fixes planes. He's enlisted, very high enlisted guy, works on the aircraft. And he said, yeah, I'm a former pilot. You know, the pastor had mentioned something. But, I mean, she was intrigued. And she talked about, yeah, we're looking for a church. But, you know, the, we had this thing happen in our life and whatever. And, I mean, she just talking. Now, there's probably one other couple in the whole restaurant. And she'd look at them out of their fire and did start keep talking. <laughs> and just laid it out. And I'm going, okay. Really? Wow. You know, and, and just, I mean, there's an anointing there. And the pastor and his wife are just listening. And they're just, and all of a sudden, I said, you know what? There's a new place for God to do something with both of you. And I said, let me tell you something. I said, your husband's fixing to retire, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's looking at it. But she said, it's like three years. His, you know, his pension will be, or not whatever you call it, military pension or whatever you call that will be this. And, you know, and, and anyway, whatever it was. And all of a sudden, it was like what was on me got on that pastor. It jumped. She sensed it jump. And she went. And then she'd occasionally look at me. He said, baby, let me tell you something. Honey, and then the wife kicks in. The pastoral gift got in there. Now, I'm sitting there with no umph because it left me. It left me. And I'm sitting now, now. Now I'm dealing with flesh, right? Where's my gravy? Yeah. 
And you know, when you, and of course, I've done, I've done inhaled the biscuits and gravy, right? You know, and what's happening? That stuff's starting to settle, right? And all of a sudden, it's like, you know, whatever. And I'm trying, man. They're going after it. I'm thinking, this, this ain't right. You know, I need a little bit more. I need that zap back, you know, because the anointing comes on you. You know, it'll. Oh, yeah. You've been there. I mean, it does. But if you're out from under it, yeah. ooh, ooh, you feel like, you know. But I saw that now in those words, and it something happened in her. There was a shift in her with her, their words that, as pastors, that pastoral gift came out, which I don't have. Man, I saw it shift something in her. She needed that at that at that moment. Those words became spirit. But he said, I walked out of there, and of course, you know, you get back. And he said, You obeyed me. Amen. I needed to get something to her. Yes, sir. Yeah. I saw that. But see, you never know out of obedience what you'll do. We were in Costa Rica, an old man's putting a part down. I don't know if I told you all this story, but he's about 85 years old. He's drinking himself to death, pain in his life, a serious situation. The family got tired. The kids got tired of it, so they took the bottle away from him, and they put a suit on him and took him to the park and put him in the sunshine. Our team comes along. I'm not even there. The kids, one of our teenage kids that's on our trip has an interpreter from a Christian school that's kind of like under the ORU system down there. And all these kids are bilingual that are in junior high and high school. So they're, they're our interpreters for our kids, and they're on the street. And we're, we just taught our kids a basically John, John 3, 16, the basic, you know, the, the Roman roads. I don't know if y'all know what that is. Some of y'all don't. But anyway, I'll let Pastor explain that one. And so uh, they just doing what we taught them to do. And we taught them to pray for the sick. Bunch of healings going on. The kids had come back and said, you know what happened to that guy? I go, what? I had no idea. But we saw a flood of people get born again. That old man got born again with his family. And the kid, the kid that was there maybe 14 was doing, well, you know, the, the, one of the kids, the, the, that man's children, comes in and says, yeah, this is my dad. He's drinking. Well, the kid instantly got in water he couldn't swim in. Because it's like, you know, I'm not, this is not through, I'm supposed to just pray with, you know. Well, thank God we had a, a, actually a Rama pastor and then a lady from Panama behind, and she, she was picking up, and he just graciously, very graciously stepped in. And she stepped in, and that whole family got born again. God set that old man free right on the spot. They were in church the next Sunday. God touched that family. It was sovereign. It was sovereign. Well, I didn't know. I wasn't even around. I was a different part of the city with a different part of the team. We got back. And we got and started talking that night, and they said, yeah, let's tell you what happened. Mark said to me, he's an evangelist with me. He goes, this guy from Florida, and he, he looked at me right in the face, and he goes, yeah, this old guy got, and I was like, oh, well, that's wild. Man, that's awesome. Amen. Nothing going on. We get back. I make sure everybody's in bed. I hit my door about 15 to 12, and I'm thinking, man, I'm going to see what's going on. CNN's the only thing I could get. So I thought, whoop. I jumped in the shower because you sweat like a horse down there. And, you know, no, seriously, you, and, you're, and I get back in, and it, it's, we're up on a mountain, it's breeze, cool breeze, and I'm thinking that, and I get out, and I'm thinking, man, I wonder what's going on. Walk out of there, lay down, I prop myself up, and I'm thinking, oh, what's going on, whatever, you know, I'm getting ready to turn, I'm going to say, blows in my room. The presence of God's in my room. And it stopped me. Now, and all I did on the inside is, yes, sir. He said, you obeyed me. Huh? You obeyed me. He said, that old man got, and that's why he said it to me. He said, that old man got saved today. Uh-huh. He said, you obeyed me. Well, I wasn't even there. No, you weren't. But you obeyed me. Huh? He said, you got them here. You got this team here. You obeyed me. You heard me. Yeah. And he said, I created that moment. And of course, the, the, the lady is Panamanian. She's, super, she's a prophetess, travels the world. Her and her husband will spend two months in Africa and just tear up a church. I mean, a church will just explode. That's how God uses them. Anyway, but she's there and she's ministering. 
And she started speaking words of life to that family. But he said to me, he said, you obeyed me. I said, yes, sir. He said, I just want you to know that. And all of a sudden, that just, and I start crying and crying. But we work for you, sir. You, you're, you're, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that was, started coming out of me. And I'm crying. And I'm thinking, well, my, one of my pastor buddies is next door. And he said, I started hearing you cry. And I, he said, I hear your conversation. I said, well, eavesdropper, know it all. You ain't asking none of your business. That's what I told him. He said, I started crying. He said, I could sense the presence of God on you in there. I could hear your conversation. That's like, well, you nosy thing, you know. And he, and he told me later, he said, I just, he said, I kicked over in tongues. He said, it was so easy. I just, you know, he said, I, that's all I could. He said, and I don't know if I was supporting you. I don't know what, I said, I don't know why I was going down. I just heard it. But I heard the Spirit of God. And I cried. And it's overwhelming. You obeyed me. And I thought, and this is what he said. What do you think was the intrigue that kept Jesus in the pursuit? Because he was flesh. Well, I mean, the Bible says he would get tired and he'd get weak. The Bible says, what does it say? Because of the joy that was set before him. And he said, I'll never forget this. It was just like this most overwhelming thank you. But I was, but it was like, and I can't really describe it if you just tried. I was trying to explain to Lee, but I couldn't. And she said, it was just him honoring you. And I said, yeah, but I just, it ain't the way you think. You know what I mean? When you play ball or sports, how many knows it's one thing for them, somebody, but when your coach slapped you across the backside, whomp, and says, you did it good. It's different. You understand what I'm saying? It, it's one thing to come from anybody else, but it's another thing to come from him. That's kind of what it was. You understand what I mean? It was just, it was just something to it. And he just said, that's the joy. I wanted to give you a small part of my heart. Ah. I'm telling you, it will erupt in you. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We work for you, sir. You're Jesus. You're head of the church. We honor you. I honor you. I mean, just, I mean, that's all I could do. And I, like I said, I, and I, I cried for a couple of hours. And finally, I just, you know, I ended up going to sleep. And he was like, yes, sir. Lee and I honor you. We honor you. And it put such a, I told Lee, I said, Bob, it's like, it's just like he put it, the, the most deepest reverential fear, or it wasn't fear, but it's respect. You know what I mean? Just, it, it's just, you're just big. I mean, I don't, I, I you know, I, I, and you get to a point, you can't say it in English, you can say it in tongues. Yeah. And, and, you know, finally it'll kick in. And that's what happened to my pastor. He said, I heard you talking to God. I heard you crying. And he said, what was on you? I, I got up, you know, it came into my room. And I started, but man thinks he started, he kicked over and tongued. He said, it's the easiest thing. I just stepped over and he said, I just, and I was, he was tired. He was very physically tired. Everybody was. That heat of wear on you. And man just, I don't ever forget that. And I've had times like that. But he said, that's the joy that's set before you. And he said, if you'll become intrigued and stay intrigued with who I am. And see, that kind of thing pulled me out of my last major spiritual fight. Yes. He said, you know, and he said, and, and, and see, I'm intrigued with presence. I'm intrigued with it. I'm a junkie. I am a spiritual junkie. After, hey, baby, especially, baby. That's where you don't walk into the room. That's where you waddle into the room, bud. You know what I mean? You know it's good if you waddle into the room, right? Come on. Yes. It's like, oh, yeah, man. Now, there's a place Pastor John takes me when we eat Mexican food here, baby. You waddle in the room because you, woo. I mean, you know what I mean? So it just, but it was, that, it's, that, it's that you know him. And he got something, and he didn't say here. He gave them authority, and he didn't say, well, now, when you go pray. It, this was just a part of who you are. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Amen. 
That's what the intrigue will take you to. Yeah. I go, yeah. And that's why I thought. And Lee told me, she said, you need to start writing these things down when you're out with people like that. I've been in hotels and people say, hey, I meet an old boy. He ain't, they ain't no more. They wouldn't know God if he came down the street in a red suit. And we get, and they said, hey, you want to go party with us? Oh, yeah, sure, let's go. And, I, and I'm straight up. I say, no, 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 buddy. We're just going to play. We're going to be, you know, no, you, you know, you like, what do you like? You like Coke and whiskey? What do you, got? you know, whatever. I said, no drugs, right? No, no, no drugs. And I'll go around. There'll be a whole group of them. I mean, I was, sitting at a, I was sitting and waiting on a pastor. They were late to pick me up. I was in a set of meetings. And I just went downstairs, and I sat in the bar. I propped my Bible open at the bar. I said, uh, Diet Coke, please, the line. He looked at me, and he goes, really? And I said, yeah, really. And then he saw the Bible, and he goes, oh. <laughs> well, you know, 30 seconds before, he'd been using certain verbiage. But when he saw that, his heritage came out of him. He knew God. He knew he'd be his his his, his uh, uh, I forgot the word, he, but his like his grandmother. But he had a certain name for. Uh, she raised him in the church. Instantly, and and my Bible sitting on that thing, because I was jotting down some notes, like I was trying to get my finalize what I was going to do tonight, and and I never got to any of it because we had a Holy Ghost meeting that night. I mean, we had people come off the streets. It's an inner city church. They came off the streets. One woman got mad. She's drunk and cooter brown. Y'all ever heard that saying? <laughs> that means drunk. And she comes in there and she's mad. The de one of the deacons caught her face and he goes over to her and he said, can I help you? And she said, my blankety-blank daughter's in here. And I told her blankety-blank after no good thing that she's not supposed to blankety-blank come in here. She's lit. But the presence of God is so tangible she starts walking, trying to find her. Well, every step she takes in there, she gets halfway down that aisle, and it hits her. Well, of course, then when I see her, I know. You understand? I know in here. I walked right up to her, and I just looked at her and said, it's time for your freedom. Man, that woman starts weeping and weeping and weeping, and her daughter sees her, and the daughter walks over. And they start, and I'm going to say, the woman hits me. Bam, hits the floor. Wakes up totally sober. And the Lord said to me, he said, you need to get the pastor's wife over here because she's going to need to impart to her. Well, I went. And of course, she comes over to the women of the church. And God just told me, so tell that alcoholic devil to come out of her. You understand? But that, that, that before I went there, I'm sitting there thinking, I better get some points straight here. Cause, and I told him, I said, you know, you hadn't concluded this. I'm not clear yet on this. Talking to, in, in here. Yeah. And you'll do the same thing. You fish. You know what I mean? You're, start, you're looking, thinking, okay, I heard this, but where are we going with this? And so I'm thinking, well, I better have some scripture just lined up. Just You know, my mind is, don't look at me so holy. <laughs> like one man of God said, I'll know when I get there. You know, he gets up there and he said, they go say, well, what? I don't know what we're going to do yet. We'll just have to, I'll know when we get there. <laughs> but we never got there that night. But in that conversation, that whole bar starts talking about God. And I, I didn't get, oh, God, thou art God. I said, what do you do? The guy said, well, I do this. I travel, and, and you know, it's a nice place, and they're all, you know, they're out, it's, it's after work. They're just picking me up and up to get me in the building and get into worship, and I minister. But, I mean, all of a sudden, everybody starts talking about God. And that has happened so many times. And, that, you know, I've gone in, and that guy said, hey, why don't you come hang out with us? You know, whatever. And I said, what do you do? Well, and he said, yeah, he said, I'm in stocks and we do this, whatever. You know, but you start talking. Well, you know, whatever. And I mean, I've sat at tables. But, hey, why don't you go to dinner with us? Sure. They're, 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 they're all heathen. <laughs> but just have the greatest time with them. And I, they said, well, what do you do? <laughs> and you don't get religious. You just start talking. Right. And it's like, and of course, I look on and say, where do you want to go with this? Hey, can I talk to you? Sure. And I mean, not, you know, nobody's around. Man, I'm in trouble. I got caught cheating on my wife. 
I said, dude, that's not good. I said, you want God to bail your out of it? <laughs> I said, well, he may not do what you think. But I said, you're looking to him for help? And he goes, yeah. Now, what do you do? Oh, God, thou art God. Your words become spirit. There's been time after time like that. He said, how do you know? Because you know on the inside. Your words will become spirit. See, God's bringing many of you into destiny. And I'll let pastor take care of that one. But it is the fullness of time. He told Peter, he said, you may not be getting this right now, but he said, if you'll just hang around, you'll get it. Yeah. See, Jesus is the one. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's what we do out there. He has anointed me. Yeah. And I thought, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, Gary, I just need you to hear me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Time after time. I mean, be at Walmart. Be at a store. I had a lady one time had sunglasses on. I, and, my, and I heard, I, I mean, that line's from here to them sisters over there. I mean, it's packed. It's a convenience store. People are pumping gas. It's, I mean, it's a late afternoon. People are going home. And I'm getting in line, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And I filled up, and I heard the Lord. I get up to her, and I'm probably from you to her, you know, and I'm looking at her, and she's doing her thing. And I'm thinking, you know, what idiot would have one girl on, a, on and there's two cash registers on a day like this, and we got people, you know, my mind's thinking, whoever's running this joint is an idiot. They were born an idiot, will stay an idiot. <laughs> And I, now don't look at me so holy. You think, you think the same way and you know it. And you go, and I, you know, you're, how many know what I'm talking about? You do. God, just stupid. Because I'm tired of waiting. And you're sitting there and you, you know, and you know, and she's not Speedy Gonzalez. You know what I mean? She's, de- you know. And so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, now I could hear Lee's voice, honey. Real maturity would say, You don't even express through body language. We're past real maturity. So, and all of a sudden, I get from about from, you know, you know, you're getting closer. And I mean, I'm about from here. And I didn't say nothing. I'm just, but inside of me, I'm like, I got a storm going on. And I want to, I want to blurt out so bad. Now, all of you are more spiritual than me, so bear with me. I'm getting there. And I get right up here and all of a sudden, and I hear, pray for now I'm glad I didn't blurt out. Or there'd been no play for. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. And I get right here and I think, and I, and I don't know why it came out of me. It just, it came, I don't know why it just did. And it, I go, what happened to you? Her uh, sunglasses. And they're wrapped around. I'm thinking, well, my first thing is domestic issue. Boy, somebody just punched you good. You know what I mean? Some guy just beat the snot. You know what I mean? That's my mm-hmm. rationale. And she takes off her glasses, and she's got an eye, some, some kind of infection or something major that's in eyes. And I, I went, oh. And she goes, and they don't know what it is, and I'm going to a specialist of a specialist. Which means like an eye doctor of an eye doctor, whatever that means. And I heard, pray for, right here. And I looked, I did, I did, I did. Like Peter walking on the water, I saw what was around me, and I looked at that long line of people. And they're all staring at me. Wondering what kind of idiot you are. <laughs> you got it. And you know what happens? I heard it. I heard it. Pray for. And I went real quick. Hey, can I pray for you? Just real quick. I'm trying to make this so quick. And she goes, what? I'm before God, Linda. Before God, she did it. But I knew what I heard. I said, can I talk to God for you? And she goes, she's got it. You, when you say it like that. And she goes, sure. And I reached out and I just grabbed her hand and I said, Jesus healer, thank you. And I, I didn't even look at the people. I didn't look in their face. I headed right out the door. Well, I'm the next, I'm in the area, right? And the next morning I go in there and I get a cup of coffee about that big. It's, it's, it's about, you know, and I'm thinking, and, and there wasn't no Starbucks around. And so I went, and I hit this machine. Well, it mixes, right? And so it's one of them mocha things, and I'm thinking, man, I've got to have, have a hit. Oh, <laughs> caffeine, you know what I mean? I was tired. And, uh, and I'm going, because I, I, that's right, I was working with a team. We had a team. And so I'm like this. And all of a sudden, I go, and, 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 and she's working. And it's 530. 
And she goes, good morning. I ignored her because I love my space. I didn't even look at her. She's right here, and I just went, and that machine's making that sound, right? And I, and I get the biggest whomping thing you can get. And she goes, good morning. And I didn't even ignore her. I just didn't look at her. And I'm thinking, if I ignore her, she will go away. That is exactly what I thought. And she turns around, and she gets in front of me, and she goes, look. And, of course, you know, I'm, and, and it's like, she goes, look. I didn't even get it because I forgot I prayed for her at that moment. And she goes, it's gone. And I'm like, it's gone. And I went, no. Nah. <laughs> well, nothing on my faith. And I felt, of course, you know, and then enough kicks in. You're past your, you know, because I hadn't, I hadn't had a good jolt yet or hit. And the Spirit of God healed that woman. And I never knew after that what happened or what went down or if it did or God, whatever, you did it. It wasn't, wasn't my faith. I'd act in obedience at that moment, you know. Woo! Praise God. Hallelujah. And it'll pay off every time. Your words will become spirit. Yes, sir. But you notice that? He didn't say for you to go pray. What he said, you just go act. Why? Because you got me in you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listen to me. Amen. Spirit upon you. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The anointing is there. It will back you. He's got your back. Your time is now. The now is now in your life. The now is now. And things that have been spoken over you prophetically have not been forgotten. They have not been left out by the Spirit of the living God. You thought, you thought they're gone. You thought, ah, uh, maybe, maybe not. But when, you, when I saw you today over at Mike's, and you, you, you were walking toward me and we shook hands, the word of the Lord came to me. And I thought, God, he, he's going to probably not be in. I mean, I really did when you said you might not be in service because of Caleb and the party. I thought, okay. And I didn't think about it. But when you walked in tonight, it came back to me. And the word of the Lord came to me and he said, you tell him what I told you to tell him. What I told you to tell him. And I'm telling you, your now is now. Amen. And I heard the Lord say, he said, things that I have prophetically said to him about things to be in his life, what he's supposed to do is now. Hallelujah. Come here. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, right now, you got oil? Oh, yeah, everybody stand up with me. I just sense there's some endowments here. There's some endowments. You understand? Yeah, right there. Just enough to get her done. Woo, hallelujah. Mm. Father, first of all, I loose him now from all fear, all condemnation. God, because I deal with it myself. You know that. It'll just try to suck the life out of you. Mm. And I speak healing and, and peace to his spirit, to his soul, to his mind. And Father, now, yeah. loose, I loose him into it. I loose him to his future, however that is to be. But the things that have been said are now to come to pass. Your now is now. Your now is now. Your now is now. Your now is now, says the Lord. For yes, many things have been said. Many things have been spoken. Many things have been said, and you did hide these things in your heart. But oh, God, where are they? Where are they? Well, they're now, says the Lord. They're now. Your now is now, says the Lord. Your now is now. Your now is now. So understand and know. Understand and know. Understand and know. Take time with me. Take time. Refresh the things. Refresh the time. Refresh the things that I have spoken to you. And they'll come up in you, says the Lord. They'll begin to bubble up here and there. Uh -huh. A little bit here, a little bit there. And then I will be, oh, oh. and I'll begin to remind you of who you are and what you're about. There it is right there. Mm. <laughs> there it is. Right there, Tim. Right there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There it is right there. You got anything? 
specifically <laughs> done. Okay. Right there? So right there. Yeah, yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. Um, right there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there it is. Joy of the Lord. That's it. Thank you for the healing Jesus. We rejoice with him, Father. That's it, we do. And just like John said, we rejoice with him. That's a good word. We just rejoice with him. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Mm, that's good. Good stuff, Vern. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Just let it flow, man. That's it, let it flow. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah just let put your it flow, hands on. Let it flow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is a fullness that has come on you since last time I was here. We've talked about things because we've sensed them. Some, some of these things we're walking into, and you and I have been talking five, six, seven years. Because yeah. I'd get over into some things and I'd see it. But, you know, I've been, you know sometimes try to walk in it but not, not hit and realize, okay, it must not be now. But now is the time. Yes. And, yeah, right there. Now the authority. Thank you, Jesus. The fullness of time has come. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> yep. Now you're going to start seeing. Oh, there it is, John, right there. You're going to start seeing spiritually like you've never seen. Thank you, Father. There it is, right there. Right there, right there, right there. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Done, done, done. Yeah, right there, right there. Shh. There's that authority right there. There's that authority. There's that authority. Come here, let me pray for you. I want to... Hmm. There it is. Oh, Krahade. Right there. I've got your future because you gave me your past. I've got your future. I've got everything still in hand because you've given me all your past. And where a man sows, where one sows, they shall reap. Where one sows, they shall reap. So rest in me. Just deeply rest in me me rest in me and the heaviness you've tried coming I bind you right now you generational issue you'll not come back around because she understands who she is and what she's about thank you father there it is yes there it is right there Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I just sense there's some endowments here. I just sense some endowments. Some endowments of the Holy Ghost. Woo. 
I just sense some giftings being released. I don't know. I just, I don't have any exact, just, it's this. But I just sense the laying on of hands. Is that okay, Pastor? Yeah. Can I say something? Yes, sir. You're, yeah. You know, I was looking at a scripture in Isaiah 50 right before service tonight. Did you know that today is Pentecost Sunday, by the way? And, of course, Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate when the Holy Ghost came on the people and that their words begin to be spirit and life. And that's what Gary preached on tonight. He was preaching on the Holy Spirit flowing through us in that way. <clears throat> and God is wanting, even though all of us have the Spirit in us right now, and probably everybody in here has been baptized in the Holy Ghost, but he's wanting to activate us on a higher level than we've ever been activated yes, on. And the right things there. he was sharing tonight, he's wanting us, God's wanting us to be open to that and expect that and move in by faith, you know, saying now is now. What he's saying is, I'm ready. Yeah. Just yeah. attach your faith to me and begin to expect these things to happen. Begin to proclaim that they're happening. Yeah. And you'll begin to see, as in Isaiah 50, it says, God has given us the tongue of a trained, skilled disciple that we would know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. That's good. That's right. That's what Gary did when he spoke to those people. He, God gave him that, those words of life, a, a tongue of a trained, skilled disciple, and he spoke a word at the right time, at the right moment yeah. in season, to one who was weary and brought them out of their weariness. And, brought them, and that's what God's wanting all of us to do. Yeah. So I believe that's one of those, at least yes. part of that endowment that God's wanting to give us exactly. tonight to move us. I just us heard, he that. said, I want to take them up. And that's what Pastor just said. It, I didn't realize it was Pentecost Sunday. And, uh, you know, just, and, 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 but there's an endowment here. There's an endowment of gifting. Is that okay? Can I pray for you? Yes. Come on up. I mean, however you want to come up, I'll let uh, ushers or help me. Or, hey, just line up. Just line up, as Pastor says. Whew. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just sense it. I just. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hi. You understand all this? Yes. Good. You're going to probably need to. Now, Father, right now, I thank you. Oh, yeah, my mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I love, yeah. I love aggressiveness, says the Lord, just the right way. I love aggressiveness, just the right way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Speak your mind, but let it be my heart, says the Lord. Let it just, yeah, hold back. Learn, learn restraint on the tongue, says the Father. Learn restraint on some things. Oh, yeah, because they'll take you higher, says the Lord. It's not just, oh, you're going up, you're going up, you're going up, you're going up. Yeah, you're going up. Heart, the heart takes you there. It's the heart that takes you there, daughter. It's not just a dekrabada de yebeshomba. Oh, yeah, man, ne, 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 man. And all unworthiness, you leave her. You leave her now. You leave her now in Jesus' name. She's going to walk in the fullness of God. She's going to walk in it. She will obey the Spirit of God, and she'll be what she needs to be. And we thank you for that. Yeah, there it is right there. Ooh, and there's a fresh tongue coming on you, a new tongue coming in you. I don't know what, yeah, it's going to be new. It's going to pray out of, you're going to speak out a new tongue as you pray in the spirit. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Mm. Yeah, it'll be on you. It'll be on you and in you. Yeah, yeah. Father, I thank you. All oh, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Just endowment of the, yeah. Oh, yeah, right there on the inside. It's right there on the inside. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is right there. Yeah, yeah. Much, much given, much required. Much given, much required. Yeah, listen to me. Just listen to me. Just listen to me. And I, yep, around you, it'll activate around you. It'll activate, and, you, and you'll even be a surprise. You'll even be, oh, wow, it's there. It's really there. That in, oh, the fullness of who you are is really there. Right there, right there in that moment, in the fullness of time. You are there, you are there, you are there. And when you see that, says the Lord, act. Trust me, Act. Act on it. Act on it. There it is. Act on it. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's on you. That's on you. That is on you. Now, Father, oh, yeah. We thank you. You honor faithfulness. You honor faithfulness. 
And Father, I thank you. Mm. Top of her head to the soles of her feet. Peace. Oh, yeah, Father, and I thank you. Yeah, just let it flow out. Her hands will burn with the anointing of God. Let it just, oh, yeah, every, yeah, every, every young girl she gets her hands on, every voice when she decrees, Father. Yes, Father. And I think you're not yet finished. There's some, still some things you've, had, you've got for her to do in, in assignment, Father. In assignment. In assignment. In assignment. Yet more to do. Yet more to do. In assignment. Yeah, it's by assignment. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there, right there, right there, right there, Father. Yeah, that's the way it goes down. Right there, right there, right there. There it is. Yeah, right there, right there, right there. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. There it is. Right there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Just good. Just yeah. Just get your hands on them. Just trust me. Just get your hands on them. Hey, where? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Bless coming in and bless going out. It'll be bless coming in and bless going out. What you take in will be given out. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Right, that is, you know that word. You know bless coming in and bless going out. That's real to you. Bless coming in and bless going out. Then says the Lord, it'll go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. It's down in you. Yeah. Father, I thank you. Mm. Just take it. Just take it. Just take it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is. Thank you, Father. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Father. Right there. Mm. <laughs> you got a mercy gift on you. You do. You know that? You got a mercy gift on you. You see the good in people. You know that? <laughs> you really do. I see, I'll just let this guy be a team. When we go to tier one, he can come be our bodyguard. We'll just put him out front. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father. Yes, yes. Mm -mm. Yep. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a grace of ministry on both of you. There's a grace of ministry on both of you. Mm. I don't know. I'm just going to say, I'll just say there's a grace of ministry. I don't know what it is, but yes, it'll you'll lead, you'll be led there. You just stay with him; he'll lead you. He'll lead you. Is this your home church? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right there. Mm. Yeah. There it is, right there. Oh yeah. Mm. Right there. It'll come. It'll come. Father, I thank you. And just let her know the joy of the Lord. Hmm. Right there. There it is. There it is. Y'all got kids? Uh, Y'all yeah. want kids? Uh, yeah, actually. We want one. You want one? You want it now? <laughs> yeah, that would be okay. That'd be okay. That okay with you? Whatever God wants. Well, Father, right now, just open her womb. Jesus. Let all what happens and yeah, what you said for men to do to replenish, that's one command we've never had problems obeying. Jesus. Oh yeah, right there. Oh yeah, just open her womb. Make all the plumbing work right. Jesus. There it is. I disagree with them. Hmm. There it is. Mm. Yeah, right there. There's a young woman. Yeah. Here it comes right there. Here it comes again. Mm. Right there. There it is. Womb open now. Say that. Womb open now. Say that. Womb open now. Yeah. Fullness of God. The fullness of God. 
Jesus' name. You know, one time I was in a meeting and the pastor's wife was pregnant. She didn't know it. I told her. I looked right at her in the meeting. I was in Iowa. And she didn't know she was pregnant. And I looked right at her and I told her, I said, it was number five for him. And I said, you are with child. You ought to have seen her face. She said, I wanted to knock you out when you said that. <laughs> she said, I wanted to hurt you, Gary Bat, so bad. <laughs> and she said, if we hadn't been before all the church, and you, she said, I'd have knocked you out. <laughs> and sure enough, she went and whatever you do, yeah. and she was. Number five for him. She said, I, I, could, I thought about hurting you for, you know what I mean? Like, well, it's not my fault. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> sure not me. <laughs> anyway, but I'm telling you right now, Spirit of God is at interest. He has interest in those things because we have interest. You understand that? Father, we thank you. Mm. Just giftings. Lord, just the giftings of God. The giftings of God right there. Mm. There it is. Uh, thank you. Yeah. You know, how many would y'all like a trip down to Tijuana for like two days? Amen. Just a run down, run in and run back. Amen. Just make a, make a run for the border. Remember Christopher Cross, his old song? Yeah. 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 Mm. There it is. There it is. Mm. There it is, right there. Right there, endowment of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. It's just there. Man, it's just the fullness of this house. Man, y'all been, been getting that here. Y'all been, oh, yeah. You'll say anything anywhere, won't you? Oh, my gosh, one of those. They will stir, you know, they, they can stir a town to revival because you'll just say it. Just say it. And when, and when it's God and those, spirit, those words become spirit and life, look out. Amen. Now, Father, I thank you. Mm. Yeah, here we go, right there. Oh, yeah. You just keep hanging around. You'll get it. You just keep growing and keep coming. You just keep coming and growing. You just keep coming and growing, okay? And get that word in you and just let the word just keep going. The anointing just keep working. Just let the word keep working. Just let the anointing keep growing. Growing his word. Study that word. You understand me? Okay. Now, Father, I thank you. Right there. Just, Father, we thank you. There it is. There it is, right there. Mm. Yep, right there. She got it. Good stuff, ain't it? Yeah. Ooh, you love it, don't you? There it comes. Not the same, not the same, not the same, not the same. Mm. There it is, there it is. There 
it is right there. You got it. You got it. Yeah, just keep, yeah, it's going to do a work in you. Oh, yeah. And both of you. God, help us. you mm-hmm. mm. father just let her wake up in the middle of the night laughing <laughs> laughing father just laughing and enjoying you You're going to get joy about you like you. You, you got it. But you're, there's a depth of joy that's going to come to you. You're going to enjoy your salvation. Mm. Right there. There it comes again. Oh, yeah. You've heard about those type, right? <laughs> Father, I thank you. You're down on the inside of it. Yeah, right there. Hmm. Cote de brochoto. You're going to get a new depth. You're going to get a new depth in the spirit. You're going to see. You're going to begin to see at a level and understand some spiritual things you've never, yeah, you've never seen before. Hmm. You ever go to the jails? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's going to increase on you. You're fixing. You got. You are you a chaplain or done any kind of training or? I don't know what they have out here. I've been with Bill Glass. I don't know who that is, but he does prison ministry. Okay, that's what I thought. You know what? I'm going to tell you this, John. You know. You, you, yeah. Okay, you're going to end up. You know Bill Glass? Okay, you're going to end up in your own prison ministry. I saw the word jail written right over your head. And that don't mean you're going there. That means you're going in there. Unless there's something I don't know about. You like to exit as much as the entrance. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you a thousand percent. Yeah, right there. But yeah. Yeah, but I see you in your own prison ministry. Now, Father, right now, I, you got timings and you got ways. Shoot. Well, here it goes, okay? Now, Father, right now. I was just looking on the inside. That's all I got. That's it. There it is. I'm not going to try to explain it. You wouldn't get it anyway. You'll just walk right into it. Yeah, that's it right there. You got your own one. You, yep, you got your own. You got your own. You got your own. Mm. Anybody come else wants hands there. laid on tonight? Just come on up. Right there. There it is. Not you drunks. You're already drunk in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> hmm. God, give him a passion he's never known. That'll be the root of all of it right there. It's a passion. 
to see men free, women free. Right there. Even young ones set free. You're going to need to develop a, a relationship that God leads you toward like a, a halfway house or a, some kind of system that you can take young men and you can get and put them in an environment like a teen challenge or something like that. But God will bring you into a relationship with somebody that you'll have a voice in that ministry, but that'll be, you'll need to place, there'll, there'll, be a, uh, there'll be situations you come across, you'll need to be able to place young men very quickly. Even by the courts, you'll have permission. Judges will look at you and say, him or jail? They'll go with you. Hmm. District favor with district attorneys. Thank you, Father. There it comes right there. Anybody else want hands laid on? Right there. Oh, yeah. Just come on up if you haven't had hands laid on you and you'd like for him to pray for you. Receive the impartation of what God wants to give tonight. Hmm. Liver work, body work, normal. Strengthen him, 100% strength in his body. No more issues. Done, done, sealed and done. Sealed and done, sealed and done, sealed and done. Done, done. Now take him up. Just take him up. Just take him up. <coughs> yeah. Father, this young man, just work in him, work in him, work in him. He's faithful. You reward faithfulness. Just there it is. Just let him work. Just work in him. What has God called to preach? That, yank, that one right there has yeah. got to take a while, but it, yeah. if you'll stay with you. Oh. <clears throat> right there. <laughs> oh, he's good. Yes, he is. Hmm. It comes right there now. There it is, right there. Oh yeah. Just take it. Just take it. Hmm. What do you do? What do you do work? Okay. Insulation for houses. So they make it, produce it. So fiberglass, mill it, or whatever. Okay. Okay, good. You know, uh, scriptures say in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in languages that they didn't understand themselves. And the reaction of the crowd, some of the people in the crowd said, these people are drunk. I've heard other people say, well, you know, it was because they were speaking in other tongues. I've heard people speak in languages I don't understand, and I didn't think they were drunk. The reason they thought they were drunk is because they were, were drunk <laughs> on the new wine of God. Yeah. They were filled with the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember the scripture I quoted earlier out of Ephesians? Be not drunk with wine, oh, amen, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit, the joy of the Lord. God was just giving us a little taste of, you know, the, the wine and beer and whiskey and all of that and the drugs of the world. That's all a cheap substitute of the real thing. God wants you to be filled with his Spirit. He wants you to have his joy He want, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise God. And he said to us tonight that he's wanting to take us up to a new place. What Gary was sharing tonight, 
the ways that God used him, the reason he was able to be used is because he stepped into a place that you're in right now. And you can cultivate that yourself. Matter of fact, it says in the scriptures, actually in the original uh, Greek, it says be being filled with the Spirit. There's, there's one initial infilling, then there's many, and you stir that up in you. You worship and praise God. You're aware spiritually. You expect God to be God in your life. You expect him to do supernatural things. You make yourself available. Amen? And you just live a life of praise and worship, and then he starts filling you with his spirit, and he starts putting his words in your mouth. He shows you what to do. He leads you to people, and he flows through you in his power. It's that simple. It's that simple. And he's said to us and has been saying to us, now's the time for you and I to step out and just let him use us. Don't have to worry about what you're going to say. If you tried to figure it out, you'd probably say the wrong thing. You just let him use you. You just let him use you. Father, thank you. We thank you for what you've done in our lives tonight, Lord. The very air of this room is permeated with your presence right now. And we just receive from you, Father, that impartation that you have for us. Your word says that what Jesus did we shall do and even greater because he's gone to the Father and he's poured out upon us what was upon him. He's given us what he walked in. And that is the precious Holy Spirit to live in us, to serve us by guiding us and leading us and giving us the ability to minister to other people and see them free. And so, Lord, as we go home, as we go to our work week this week, I thank you, Father, that your people are used by you. I thank you, God, that when they get up praising and worshiping you tomorrow morning, that that Holy Spirit that's within them begins to just rise up in that artesian well that's in them. And, God, they live in that place, Lord, of praise and worship all day long in your joy. That joy that's unspeakable, we can't explain it, but it's full of your glory. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, thanks for coming tonight. We already did the offering. Yeah, if you want to give some more, though, we'll receive it. <laughs> we already did the offering earlier. We did the combination with the, our tithe and offerings. So, well, you can just... Hang around here if you want and be drunk for a while. I don't care. Last person out, shut the lights off. Amen. Have a great week.